All right, guys. So we are going to make this windshield. So this is the play here. Is that uh, we're going to make that green windshield that goes in the automobile box car. We're actually going to make a lot of parts of the automobile box car because they're just more complicated and can get you guys some good experience with just some more complicated and intricate parts. So some of the simpler stuff that we've been doing. So that's uh, what we're going towards. As you'll notice, it wasn't a ton of features for me. I don't even have to scroll. Um, a sketch, an extrusion, a fillet, a shell, a plane creation, only one other sketch, an extrude and shell. So two shells, two extrudes, two sketches, one plane, one fillet. So not a ton of features for us to worry about. So uh, with that being said, there is a document that you will see. It looks like this. So it's called 5.2B windshield, and it kind of walks you through the first sketch. Um, I would need to give you some dimensions, so I've basically already done that for you. Um, and kind of walks you through some of the steps there. Um, I measured them with a dial caliper to get some of these. So uh, we're going to use a combination of this document and another one. So uh, you need to have this one up at first until we get to this point, which will switch to the second document. So again, this other document, guys, actually, I figure I'll show you that real quick. Uh, so here's the other document that shows you all these parts. Now, again, these are all for that automobile box car, and they've already been done for us. So they've already actually done all the measurements for us. I just verified them with the dial caliper. But we're really making this right here. And, uh, again, you could just base it off of just this. Like, this picture is enough to make the entire thing, but that other document is a little bit more detailed, and it'll kind of walk you through a little bit with what I'm doing. So... Uh, you could work with just one document, but I think the uh, other document's going to be a good start. So let's uh, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to create a new document here. I'm going to call this the windshield. And here we go. All right. So again, I'm going to have this document off to the side on my second screen. So maybe you have it up on your phone or something else. Um, just so you have something, I guess you could print it off as well with that. So, here we go. I'm going to create a sketch. I'm going to do it on the front surface. Again, I'm going to move fairly quickly. You can always pause and rewind. I'm going to hit P to get rid of those other planes. I am going to, I'm actually going to create four points. So, I've already got one at the origin. There's one above it, but not exactly above it. See how it's not exactly above it? That's important. Don't make it exactly above it. But there's another one here and another one down here. This one is in line with the origin, right? So I placed those three points. The origin gives me a total of four. And then I'm going to use some lines. Actually, really only one line. Just going to connect these two here. And then I'm actually going to dimension it as well. According to the sheet, it is 3.040. Some of those other points shift around. That's okay. The other three are actually arcs. They're actually curved. Uh, even if they're really slightly curved. So meaning the three-point arc tool is right here, so hotkey A. I'm going to click here for my starting point, click here for my finishing point, and then adjust the, the curvature of it. I'm actually just going to place it and then hit the dimension tool and dimension that radius. It says that here it's a six-inch radius here. Did not like that. Back up there. Maybe I don't want to do that arc yet. Um, I, I agree. I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to dimension the point. Or else that point's going to jump on me. So the distance from this point to this dot. Let's get that first. Let's get these points dimensioned. I'm getting ahead of myself. So that point is 0.64 down. This point here all the way down is 1. That looks a bit better. Um, the distance from this point all the way back to here is 3.010. Notice not 3.04, there's a tiny, tiny 0.03 difference there. And the distance from this point all the way to there is 0.255. Um, so now all the points are black. I should have done that first. That way none of these points move around. Because now when I do this arc tool, it's going to work great. Watch. Starting point, ending point, a little curve there. Dimension that to have a 6-inch radius. You're like, gosh, Young, that's a straight line. No, it's not. It's curved, but just slightly. It's actually a six-inch radius circle, so it'll be like this massive circle. Anyway, there's also an arc from here to here. 
I'll mention that one. This arc is not nearly as um, it's only got a 0. 0.4 radius. And one more arc from here to here. That thing looks real nice, doesn't it? Uh, its dimension is also six. So the actually the curvature of this arc and the curvature of this arc are the same. Okay, so that's what's happening in the first picture. Now, the issue we have is as I built this, I didn't make things tangent. So these are actually three different sections. So this is a little bit complicated, but because I want these to all, be all three sections, yes, I've dimensioned these, but I'm actually going to go in and delete this dimension as well as this one dimension here. I'm going to delete it as well, so they're gone. Notice I've got some blue back into my shape, but if I grab the tangent constraint, which is hotkey T, and tangent this curve to this curve, and then this curve to this curve, it also goes black now, and actually what it's done is it's made all of these geometrically tangent, so just touching one another, these curves, which actually makes it a nice, smooth curve. So we've added those tangents in, which is actually the third picture on the document. So really what we're going to do here is finish the sketch and extrude this 2.55, like it says in the picture. And there we've got that shape. Now, the very last thing, there's no picture for it, but there is some words at the bottom of that document that tell you to place a fillet. And if you didn't put those tangent constraints, if you're just skipping steps, one, I don't feel bad for you because you're skipping steps. Um, but this won't work if you don't, uh, if you hadn't done that last step. So see how as I click there, it tangents the whole thing. and I'll do the same thing on this edge. It's because those are tangents. It does that for me automatically. And the dimensions are 0.5, as it says in the shape. So there we've got that nice top part of the document. So I'm actually going to close this one down. That's where I was following along and bring up the Word document to how to do the rest of this. So what I need to do is I need to get this drop down section here. I'm going to zoom in a bit here. So this section right here, it ex we need to build it off in this space. We can't build it here on this edge. We need to build it off in this space and send it to to make this contour correct. Um, so we're going to build that plane off of it. But before we do that, let's go ahead and hollow this thing out and shell it. We need to look at these dimensions to see how thick the shell is. And if I look right here, look, that shell is 0 0.07. So I'm going to drag that over to my other monitor. Grab that shell tool, which is right here. Click the bottom, because I would like to remove that face. There we go. And it's 0 0.07 thickness. Perfect. Nice shell there. Now, again, this plane that's going to exist off, right? So I've got this plane here. Oh, where'd my document go? And it exists off, according to the picture. It's 0 0.67 from the bottom of it. So that's an important step here to be able to create a plane kind of off in space. So it's really easy, actually. You hit the plane button, which is right here. I want it to be offset, which is the default, because that's the one you use most commonly, from this bottom surface. Well, how far do I want it offset in a space? 0.67, probably two-thirds of an inch. Now we've created this plane off into space, and it's on that plane that we're going to sketch. So I'll select that plane. I'm going to right-click View Normal to it. And if you don't like this drawing behind it, you could actually turn it off if you wanted by just taking uh, your extrude and mirroring it or getting rid of it, but I actually want it to be there. So the next thing I'm looking at, just so you can kind of figure out, I'm moving on from this section here and focusing really close on these two pictures. So I'm creating this lower sketch here. I've got all the dimensions I need, and there's six little nubbies on it. And then this little word says B is zooming in on the nub right here, so you can kind of see exactly these tight, tiny dimensions so we can work with those. So that's where you should be, have your focus on, what you should have your focus on. All right, so again, I'm going to make a rectangle because it's the generic shape of the rectangle. Um, there is a fillet, so I'm going to go ahead and put those fillets in now as well. So this corner, this corner, this corner, and this corner. I'll have a fillet of 0.15. Okay, let's just take care of that. Um, then what else do I see? Let's go ahead and dimension this as well. So the distance, let's be careful here, from this front edge to this front edge, right there, from the front to the front, it says it's 0.68. 
it says the maximum distance from the back to the front is I can't see I gotta scroll is a point three or three point oh four. Whoa, I lied. It's point it's two point two two. Look at the wrong thing in the picture. All right, then this edge to the bottom. So that front edge to the bottom is tiny, 0.29 inches. Uh, and then the back dimension here to here is 2.26. That's how the whole thing is black. So we're on the right track here. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we've got to create these nubs. And this is going to be a little bit tedious, all right? But bear with me here. I'm actually going to build the nubs on the bottom. I'm going to come down here. So if you look, there's a little nub. It sticks out like this, comes out like this, comes back in, all right? There's another one over here that does the same thing. Comes out, comes in, comes there. So let's just focus on these two nubs for a second. I'm going to trim and trim out this little section. I don't need it, right? Now I have those nubs. And to dimension those nubs, they're actually dimensioned via the center. So I need to mark those midpoints. So I grab the point tool and mark those. So now when I dimension the midpoint to that front edge, as it says in the shape or in the drawing, is 0.95. Same thing here. From here to the front is 1.94. So some things it didn't light, some things it didn't. Um, I think I've somehow created this line segment we got an issue here i'm gonna trim it out and just to make sure it's gone there we go i don't know why it came back zombie all right so now we're good we've got the nubs in the right spot but they're still not the right size so remember that smaller picture off to the right that tells you how big each nub is so uh the distance that the nub sticks out right here it's teeny tiny. It's actually point oh, who? What is that? Point oh four. Barely sticking out. I did both of those, and then the overall width is point oh five. And now I have my nubs. Bad news is, you got to do it again up here. So same thing. I'm gonna grab my little line tool. Grab my nubs, get them out here, get another nub over here. Again, I'm just placing them so they look like they're supposed to look like. Um, I'm going to go ahead and place the midpoints. Get those dimensioned the same way as the other ones. So this should be nice. So the distance from here to here is going to be the same. 1.94. And the same thing here. The distance from here to here. I'll come down and place it here is 0.95 those are the same yeah so that's nice got that taken care of so then remember these were 0.04 as is this one so that was this the depth at which they stuck out and then their top section is 0 0.05 0 0.05 and then i'm going to grab that trim tool which is hotkey m and i'm going to trim out get my nubs i probably should trim last i like that better there's two more nubs to get here and they are here there's a nub here and a nub over here same process right i'm gonna grab the point tool get their midpoints because that's where they're dimensioned from hit the dimension tool i'm going to dimension them they are both uh 1.28 from the bottom so the distance from the midpoint to this bottom edge Bring it straight out is 1.28. I need the same thing on this side. Actually, you know what we could do? Let me show you another trick. Couldn't you just line these up horizontally? Say so this midpoint and this midpoint have to be lined up. Ah, that would have been way easier on the other ones, too. You wouldn't have to hit the dimension. You could have vertically aligned those. Come on, Young. All right, so these are 0.04 again. 0.04. And they're total width is 0.05 now we're gonna hit M to trim out the little uh oh that's sometimes when you go click crazy all right I got it and then I'll trim out this one perfect 
All right, here's where the magic happens. We're going to finish that sketch, so now you can see it floating off into space. When we extrude this now, I'm going to extrude it the other direction as an add, but this time I'm going to go to the next thing it hits because it'll just move up until it hits something, which is exactly what we want because we have to match that curve of the roof. So we'll say OK. Obviously, the last thing we have to do is shell it out. So I'll grab that shell tool. This shell is a bit thinner, so I clicked on the bottom face. According to the picture, the shell is 0 0.05. Yes. And yeah, there she is. I guess we can make her green. We can come down here to the parts. Um, I like to just go to the edit appearance, give it a nice green. That looks like a pretty good green to me. And then actually over here in the view, you can actually make it translucent. Because now it looks exactly like it does. And there you go. That is how you make the windshield.